In this video, we're going to focus on solving quadratic equations by factoring. So let's start with this example. 3x squared minus 9x is equal to 0. Find the value of x. Now, in this problem, we only have two terms. The best thing we could do is factor the GCF, the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is 3x. To find out what goes inside, divide. 3x squared divided by 3x is equal to x. And if you divide negative 9x by 3x, that's equal to negative 3. And now what you need to do is set each factor equal to 0. So here's the first one and here's the second one. So we're going to set 3x equal to 0 and x minus 3 equal to 0. So if you divide both sides by 3, 0 divided by 3 is 0. So the first answer is x is equal to 0. And for the second one, we need to add 3 to both sides. So we get two answers, 0 and 3. Now, for the sake of practice, try a similar example. Feel free to pause the video as you work on it. Factor 5x squared minus 20x. Go ahead and calculate the value of x. So 5 goes into itself and 20. So the GCF is 5x. 5x squared divided by 5x is x, and negative 20x divided by 5x is negative 4. Now, just like we did before, we're going to set each factor equal to 0. So if 5x is equal to 0, that means x is equal to 0. And for this one, if we add 4 to both sides, x is equal to 4. So these are the two answers. x can be 0 or 4. Now, what about this example? x squared minus 16. If it's equal to 0, what is the value of x? So what we have is a difference of perfect squares, a squared minus b squared. To factor it, it's going to be a minus b and a plus b. So what I like to do is I like to take the square root of whatever I see here. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 16 is 4. So one of them is going to be positive, and the other is going to be negative. So then you set each factor equal to 0, just like we've been doing before. And so we're going to get two answers. x is equal to positive 4 and negative 4. So let me give you a similar example. Try this one x squared minus 49 is equal to 0. So for each of these examples, if you want to pause the video, feel free. The best way to learn is by doing these examples. So to factor it, it's going to be x and x, and the square root of 49 is 7. So we're going to have minus and plus. So then we have two answers, positive 7 and negative 7. Now what about this one? 3x squared minus 75. Factor that one. Now we can't take the square root of 3 or 75. They're not perfect squares. However, we can take out the GCF, which is 3. So 3x squared divided by 3 is simply x squared, and negative 75 divided by 3 is negative 25. And now we could factor it. The square root of 25 is 5. So then the two answers are x is equal to 5, and x is equal to negative 5. Go ahead and try this. 4x squared minus 81 is equal to 0. So what is the square root of 4x squared? The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of x squared is x. So it's going to be 2x. The square root of 81 is 9. So this is what we're going to have. Now let's set each factor equal to 0. So for the first one, we need to add 9 to both sides. And so 2x is equal to 9. And then we've got to divide by 2. So for this one, x is 9 over 2. Here, let's subtract 9 from both sides. And then let's divide it by 2. 
So the other answer is negative 9 over 2. So that's how you can factor using the difference of squares method. Now sometimes you may need to factor a trinomial. If x squared plus 8x plus 15 is equal to 0, what is the value of x? So if you have a trinomial where the leading coefficient is 1, or if there's no number in front of x squared, here's what you need to do. Find two numbers that multiply to 15, but that add to the middle coefficient 8. So we know 3 times 5 is 15, and 3 plus 5 adds up to 8. So to factor it, it's just going to be x plus 3 times x plus 5. And so we know the answers is going to be x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 5. And so that's what you have to do for an example like this. So let me give you another problem. Let's say if we have x squared minus 3x minus 40 is equal to 0. Go ahead and factor it. So what two numbers multiply to negative 40 but add to negative 3? Well, we know 8 times 5 is 40, and they differ by 3. So which one should be negative? If we use negative 5 and positive 8, that's going to add to positive 3. But if we use negative 8 and positive 5, it adds up to negative 3. So it's going to be x minus 8 times x plus 5. And so x is equal to 8 and is equal to negative 5. Now what about this one? x squared minus 7x plus 12 is equal to 0. Try that. So what two numbers multiply to 12 but add to negative 7? Well, we know 3 times 4 is 12. And negative 3 times negative 4 is also positive 12 but adds up to negative 7. So this can be factored as x minus 3 times x minus 4. And so x is equal to 3 and 4. Now let's try another similar example. So let's say if we have 2x squared minus 8x minus 42 is equal to 0. What should we do? So notice that the leading coefficient is no longer 1. When you see this, the first thing you should do is try to factor the GCF, which in this example is 2. 2x squared divided by 2 is x squared. Negative 8x divided by 2 is negative 4x. And negative 42 divided by 2 is negative 21. And now we can factor it. So what two numbers multiply to negative 21 but add to negative 4? Well, we know 7 times 3 is 21. So where should we put the negative? On the 7 or on the 3? If we put it on the 7, negative 7 plus 3 adds up to negative 4. So then this is going to become... 2 times x minus 7 times x plus 3. And so the answers are 7 and negative 3. Try this example. 2x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. So in this problem, the leading coefficient is not 1. And 2 is not the GCF. So we have to use a different method for this problem. In a situation like this, where the leading coefficient is not 1, and you can't take out that 2, or whatever number is present here, you need to multiply the leading coefficient by the constant term. So 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Then find two numbers that multiply to negative 12, but add to the middle coefficient. If you don't see a number there, it's a 1. So this is going to be 4 and 3. But this time we're going to use positive 4 and negative 3. Because 4 plus negative 3 is positive 1. Now, the way in which we're going to factor it is different. We're going to replace the middle term with these two. So let's replace 1x with 4x and negative 3x. So notice that the value of the equation has not changed. 4x minus 3x is equal to 1x. Now, we need to do something called factoring by grouping. In the first two terms, we need to take out the GCF, which is 2x. 
2x squared divided by 2x is x. 4x divided by 2x is 2. Now, in the last two terms, take out the greatest common factor, which in this example is negative 3. Negative 3x divided by negative 3 is x, and negative 6 divided by negative 3 is positive 2. Next, factor out the GCF again, which is x plus 2. So if we remove x plus 2 from this term, we're going to have a 2x left over. And if we remove x plus 2 from that term, we're going to have a negative 3 left over. So that's how you can factor it. Now this factor leads to the answer that x is negative 2. And for this one, if you set it equal to 0, you'll see that x is equal to 3 over 2. So these are the two answers. For those of you who want to see this step, here it is. So first, add 3. And then you'll have that 2x is equal to 3. And then divide by 2. So x is equal to 3 over 2. Now let's look at one more example that's similar to the last one. So try this problem if you want to. So we can't take out any GCF in this problem. So we need to multiply 6 by negative 35. 6 times negative 35 is equal to, I'm going to use the calculator for this, this is negative 210. So what we need to do is we need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 210 but add to negative 11. So if you need to find some numbers, you can find it here. Factors of 6 are 3 and 2. Factors of 35 are 7 and 5. So we can start with the lowest number, 2. 210 divided by 2 is 105. So those two numbers don't differ by 11. If we divide it by 3, that's going to be negative 70. The next number is 5. If we divide it by 5, it's 42. The next number is 6. Negative 210 divided by 6 is negative 35. The next number is 7. 210 divided by 7 is negative 30, if we use negative 210. After that, we have 10. 2 times 5 is 10, so that's the next number to try. And negative 210 divided by 10 is negative 21. So whenever you have large numbers, it helps if you're consistent in making a list. I like to start with the lowest number and progressively work towards the higher numbers. And eventually, you'll find it if you go in order. So notice that 10 and negative 21 differs by 11, by negative 11, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace negative 11 with 10 and negative 21. So this is going to be 6x squared plus 10x minus 21x. So these two have to add up to negative 11x. So now let's factor by grouping. In the first two terms, I can take out a 2x. 6x squared divided by 2x is 3x, and 10x divided by 2x is 5. In the last two terms, I can take out a negative 7. Negative 21x divided by negative 7 is 3x, and negative 35 divided by negative 7 is positive 5. So if these two factors are the same, that means you're on the right track. So let's factor out 3x plus 5. If we take this term and divide it by that term, the 3x plus 5s will cancel, leaving behind 2x. If we take this term and divide it by that one, the 3x plus 5s will cancel again, leaving behind negative 7. So now let's set 3x plus 5 equal to 0 and 2x minus 7 equal to 0. So let's subtract 5. So 3x is equal to negative 5, and then divide by 3. 
So the first answer is negative 5 divided by 3. Now in this example, let's add 7. So 2x is equal to 7. And then divide by 2. So x is equal to positive 7 divided by 2. And so now you know how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. Thanks for watching.